I'm gonna be 100% real with you all. I went into this video expecting to make a why Miles Garrett is the best pass rusher in the league video. But the more research I did, obviously had to watch TJ Watt before making that call. I was like, man, this argument's getting kind of hard to defend. So I switched it and I'm making it a TJ Watt, why TJ Watt is the best pass rusher in the league video. So um, sorry, Miles, I still think that he is right, right there. I would also throw Nick Bosa in that discussion. Then Joey Bosa is not far behind those three. But anyway, this is exactly what makes TJ Watt so special and how he got 22 and a half sacks last year. First, let's hear it from the man himself, TJ Watt, on why he thinks that he's the best pass rusher in football. Yes, sir. Without giving away any of your secrets, what's something in your game that has consistently developed to make you the best pass rusher in the NFL? Oh, hands. I think hands down has, has been my hands. I agree with Watt's self-assessment here. Watch how he beats the wide receiver, the running back, and the tackle on this play. Obviously, you'd expect him to beat Cobb pretty badly, but any kind of chip that Cobb wants here is rendered useless by the swipe. Then moving on to the next two blockers, he likes to threaten vertically and then cut inside through those inside shoulders. David Johnson tries to lower his shoulder and chip Watt here, but Watt jukes the running back out. The defender jukes the running back out on this play, and Johnson's kind of left lunging on air. And Watt just swipes him right by, and then you see that inside swim move attacks the pressure point on the tackle's elbow and just works right through him and is able to deliver a hit on the quarterback. Here he's lined up against David Quessenberry, and once Quessenberry shoots his hands, once he punches, Watt is just going to put him in a torture chamber. Initially, Watt threatens vertically, but then that fourth step propels him inside through this gap. Watt's inside arm chops down Quessenberry's inside arm, while his outside arm simultaneously is reaching over Quessenberry, getting his entire body lined up, over just Quessenberry's left arm. That's all Quessenberry has to block him with. The guard also comes over to help out, but Watt has already made it so far upfield that he can't really do much besides wrap his arm around him as well, and Watt is able to power through those and make the sack. When Watt gets the timing of that swim move right, it's like, it's like a green release on a 2K game. The timing is just too good. It's going to work every time. The tackle shoots his hands, but by the time they're extended, Watt is already past him, and the quarterback better have the ball out to his first read, otherwise Watt's going to be able to get a sack. Against tackles that like to punch high, TJ Watt uses the ghost technique, and what that is, or how you set it up, is at first you make it look like a bull rush, extending the arms, looking like he might go right through his frame, and what the tackle is doing here is he's going to try to punch the center of TJ Watt's chest here to try to stymie it. But then, TJ Watt takes those hands away, dips his shoulder, and then rips through the tackle, preventing him from resetting his hands. At this point, he's got him beat, just has to flip his hips towards the quarterback and close that space quickly, which he can, of course, do, gets the sack. Here's another example of it against the first-round pick, Alex Leatherwood. Alex Leatherwood shoots his hands, TJ Watt dips down, and then just pops right back up on the other side of Leatherwood. Leatherwood has not made any contact with the guy, and then he turns the corner, tracks down. Derek Carr forces the fumble, as he so often does. He might even recover his own fumble here. Now, a lot of TJ Watt's sacks are coverage sacks or cleanup sacks, and he gets a lot of shit for that, but there is kind of an art to them. On this play, it is overtime, four minutes left in the game against the Seahawks, and he's getting double teamed by the tight end and the right tackle. Now, that's a lot to work through, but despite this, he's kind of letting his natural instincts fight the blockers while his eyes are very much in the backfield and watching the quarterback. So when Geno Smith takes off, I mean, initially, you can see all of these defenders are still rushing to where he was a second ago, but TJ Watt is rushing towards where he is going to be, and he's able to intercept him, force a fumble. Devin Bush recovers it. Game over. Steelers basically win right here. And on some plays, he looks completely unblocked, but usually there's stuff like play action and motions that are supposed to hold defenders in that position, but he just never bites on them. Some edge rushers have a bad habit of stutter stepping or squaring their feet before they engage on a bull rush, but TJ Watt is able to hit this guy in full stride. He also engages with the defender first. He is proactive and is able to get inside his frame. He's also rushing half a man. The inside half is able to kind of turn him away, extend his arms, create separation, and pressure Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson has good pocket presence and just sidesteps Watt, but then Watt gets back after it 
and finishes it off. He'll never be one of the league's most dominant power rushers, I think, but it is a tool that he can win with. And as far as Bend goes, well, I already talked about the ghost move. You need Bend to pull that off, but it's always been pretty good. The ankle flexion he's displaying here, nice stuff. And that was supposed to be a weakness coming out of college. Watch him round the corner versus the Bills here and just watch the angles that his ankles hit here. How they're not shattered, I don't know. So on film, there just aren't a whole lot of holes to poke in his game. And then on the stat sheet, as far as production goes, well, you know the story. 22 and a half sacks this year in 15 games. And if you think pressures are a better indication of pass rush well, he led all primary edge rushers in pressure rate as well this year. He was also top 20 among defensive linemen in his average depth of run tackle, which means he was pretty much just living in the backfield and around the line of scrimmage. And perhaps most importantly, his consistency right now is unmatched. It's his fourth straight year with over 12 sacks. It's his third straight year as first team all pro. And it's his second straight year leading the league in sacks. Now, I do think that the best plays from Miles Garrett are better than the best plays from TJ Watt, all right? I watch Garrett and some of the things he can do are just totally generational and special and only he can do them in the league right now. But as far as consistency goes, as far as production goes, I think the crown of best edge rusher has to go to TJ Watt right now for all he's done these past four years. On my list of the top 100 players in the NFL, I think I had Miles Garrett at seven and TJ Watt at eight. Go ahead and flip those, but they're still one spot apart. But anyway, sorry about that Steelers fans, sorry about that Browns fans, but that's just where I'm at on this issue now. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will be back next week with another video. Drop a suggestion in the comments for what you'd like to see and maybe I'll get around to it. I will see you next week.